Okay, YouTubers, time for physics fun. It's only Tuesday, but um, I've been doing this with A2. Now, I have got a video actually already on this topic, but this is a bit more of a professional setup. So I've just got a very strong, there we go, look, horseshoe magnet. There we go, so really big and beefy, north and south. Doesn't actually matter the direction, you'll see in a minute why. And it's really simple. So I've got these two aluminium, they look like kind of almost like a bit of an ax and I can make it move. But it looks like it's happening underwater. Look what happens if I just let it go freely. Ooh, that's nice. This one? Ooh, that's nice. So they basically are doing about the same, although, I don't know, normally if I make these manually myself, I take a bit of metal and I fold the metal up to create all the little slits. So it's technically the same mass. I have a feeling this one's a little bit not the same mass, so it's a bit of a cheat, but we bought these, so we've got to go with it. So put it in the field, put it in the field, Let's have a look. I'm going to put it out, same amount, and wow. Clearly, this one is damped. This one, it's a little bit slower, but not a massive amount. Let's go back to what we had before. That's clearly a lot freer. And if I can pull it in without trapping it, look, it does slow it down, but not by as much. And it's actually really simple. This is Faraday's uh, law of electromagnetic induction. And what Faraday said, is that there's a, relation, a relationship between the change in magnetic flux and the induced electromotive force epsilon. So the magnitude of the EMF induced in a circuit or in here, in the metal as it moves, is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage that cuts across the circuit. Now in this case, the field is going across the magnet here. So this way, the field is going this way. So north actually to south, so it's coming towards me. And as it goes through, what it's doing is it's pushing electrons in the metal. And in the metal, we develop what we call an eddy current. The eddy current creates its own magnetic field and that opposes the direction of travel. So we get this electromagnetic breaking effect, which is kind of cool. In this one, the eddy currents are smaller because they can't work. They generate like this. And if they're generating in a circular direction like this, this here, the little slits, stop the current from building up to be a big current. So there you go, Faraday's law. Now there's another cool bit you could do. Take a load of these really little neodymium magnets, put them all on a ruler, and let's see what happens. Take a piece of copper, let's allow it to fall. You can watch gravity do its job. Whoa, that was a bit slow, wasn't it? Let's see what happens now. Even slower, aluminium. Wow, actually, that's crazy. So what's happening is, I'm using gravitational field strength of Earth to create a force down. And as it falls, it's generating this electrical current, eddy current inside, which is creating a field that opposes the motion. And the field is acting up, so it slows down. Because clearly, if it's just a piece of metal, it should. Let's try it on the other bit of the ruler. Straight away, falls down. Also, really interesting, a bit of a close-up look. It's not actually magnetic, is it? And this one. It's not magnetic. Because look, if I start to move it, I can feel it actually moving. This is actually bro it says bronze on it. It's sort of a copper bronze, isn't it? Look, definitely should be going faster than that. I am not doing slow motion, but it's almost like the slow motion. Oh, let's have another go. One last go, and then I'm going. So there you go. If you liked it, subscribe, and you might see some more stuff on magnetism.